Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, my name is uh, Stephen Lachlan. I'm a PhD student at Queen's University Belfast. And today I'm going to talk to you about some of the work that I'm doing as part of the PhD, which uh, is entitled Development of a Peptide-Based Multifunctional Gene Delivery Vector for Delivery to Metastatic Prostate Cancer Cells. So first of all, if I can talk about uh, gene delivery, or more specifically, uh, systemic gene delivery. Uh, <coughs> in order for a gene to have a therapeutic effect, it must first, first reach the nucleus of the, the target tissue. So what we need from our gene delivery vector, first of all, is that it can encapsulate DNA uh, to protect it from the action of nucleases uh, in the systemic circulation. We then need a mechanism for, uh, to, tar to target the tumor tissue or the disease tissue. Once the disease tissue is reached, uh, we need a mechanism then to penetrate the cell. If movement into the cell is by endocytosis, which often it is, uh, you need then a mechanism to escape from the endosome to be released into the cytoplasm. And then finally, uh, a, a mechanism to shuttle towards the nucleus where finally the gene can have a therapeutic effect. So that brings me on to the RALA peptide. So Helen, uh, in her talk, already touched on the RALA. I'll just reiterate uh, some, some of those points. So there are two key features of the RALA peptide that make it particularly appealing as a gene delivery vehicle. Uh, the first is that it is arginine rich. So when it's backbone, there are seven arginine uh, amino acids. So arginine is a highly positive amino acid. So this is important, first of all, because it can bind DNA and uh, condense it into nano-sized particles. Uh, the second feature, then, is that it can st form strong hydrogen bonds with uh, n uh, negatively charged components of the phospholipid membrane uh, to enable movement into the cell by multiple mechanisms. So then the second feature of RALA uh, is that it is an amphipathic peptide. So this is uh, because of the arrangement of the arginine, alanine, leucine, alanine uh, amino acids in its backbone. So what this means is that the hydrophilic arginine residue is concentrated on one face of the alpha helix within the uh, hydrophobic leucines in green here on the opposite face. So what we've been able to show uh, using circular dichroism is that when there's a drop in pH, similar to that which occurs in the uh, late endosome, that more of the ralipeptide exists in this alpha helical conformation, which enables it to fuse to the endosome, rupture the endosome, and then be released into the cytoplasm. So uh, moving on then, uh, what we wanted to do was see how the ralipeptide performed in vivo. Uh, so what we did in this instant was deliver plasmid luciferase. And as you can see, uh, that there's a sort of accumulation of um, expression in the liver, and in particular in the lungs of mice that were treated. Uh, so this has all been published in the Journal of Control Release uh, in 2014. And what we wanted to do then was to see if we could try to improve the pharmacokinetic profile of the ralipeptide. And what we decided to look at, uh, at then was conjugation with polyethylene glycol. So we chose a molecular weight of 5K based on some work that was previously carried out in the group. And we conjugated that to the C terminus of the ralipeptide. So in terms of characterization then, uh, what we first wanted to see was does it condense DNA? So we looked at a range of N to P ratios, and you can see from N to P6 onwards that there's no migration of DNA through the gel, which means it's being retained within the nanoparticle. We then took a TEM image, and you can see small spherical nanoparticles there that don't aggregate, which is which was good. Then in terms of size and charge, we wanted to, uh, we compared the RALA P, so the pegylated RALA, with the RALA nanoparticle. Uh, so in terms of size, uh, there wasn't much difference. The RALA P was maybe slightly smaller uh, in av on average than the RALA nanoparticle. And in terms of charge, then you can see that there's a reduction in charge for the RALA P in blue here, as compared to the, uh, the RALA nanoparticle, which was, which was what we wanted to see. Then finally, in terms of uh, DNA encapsulation efficiency, the RALA P actually encapsulated slightly less uh, than the RALA peptide, but was still in around uh, the 80% mark. So what we wanted to look at then was, does it transfect cells in vitro? Um, so what we did was we tried to transfect PC3 cells, prostate cancer cell line. And what we found, unfortunately, was that all of the NDP ratios that we looked at, uh, that the RALAP failed to transfect the cells. So this wasn't entirely uh, unexpected. Uh, there's a body of evidence to show, particularly in systemic gene delivery, that the attachment of polyethylene glycol can have an inhibitory effect on the sort of cellular kinetics of, of gene delivery vectors. So that's in terms of internalization, endosomal escape, and then movement through the cytoplasm. So we wanted to start to look at ways to maybe improve or to preserve this uh, cellular level activity. 
And what we decided to go with was a, a sort of a mixture of RALA with a pegylated RALA to form a composite nanoparticle to see if this would retain the cellular level activity, but also without losing out in the pharmacokinetic benefits of the peg. So what it involved essentially was mixing RALA with RALA P, uh, triggering the nanoparticle formation through uh, the, the addition of DNA. So it's a fairly straightforward process. And um, because RALA has been shown previously to perform best at the end of B10, we use that as our sort of basis on which to uh, form our weight to weight ratios. So there's 14 micrograms uh, of RALA used at the end of B10, and we replaced in two increments, uh, microgram increments, uh, the RALA with RALA P. Uh, so it'll hopefully become clear in the next, in the next slide. So <coughs> over here on the left hand side, you have RALA only, which is 14 to naught. And on the right, you have the RALA P only, which is the pegylated form on the right hand side. So as you move from left to right, the amount of RALA in the nanoparticle decreases, and the amount of RALA P or polyethylene glycol in the nanoparticle increases. So as you can see there, at all the weight to weight ratios we looked at, there was no movement of DNA through the gel, so it was being retained within the nanoparticle. Again, we took a TEM image and saw small spherical nanoparticles that occurred singularly. In terms of size and charge, the size were all in around 100 nanometers. And as you can see, again, moving from left to right, as the amount of polyethylene glycol in the nanoparticle increased, there's a sort of corresponding drop in uh, charge, with the most uh, dramatic drop occurring here, the 6 to 8 weight to weight ratio, where uh, the RALA-P constituted more than 50% of the, of the nanoparticle. And then finally, we looked at DNA encapsulation efficiency, and we saw that the, the, by having some free RALA in the composite nanoparticle, that it brought the, the encapsulation efficiency back up to above 80%. So did it, the, the new co composite nanoparticle transfect cells in vitro. So yeah, what, what we saw was that right up to weight to weight 4 to 10, that, oh, pardon me. Right up to weight to weight 4 to 10, we were able to see, it might not be very clear there, uh, GFP expression from cells. Uh, when we looked at that uh, using flow cytometry, we saw a slight increase for the 12 to 2 ratio, but then a decline in the transfection efficiency after that as the amount of polyethylene glycol in the nanoparticle increased. So what we wanted to look at then was to try and visualize why the, the, the composite nanoparticle was transfecting cells where the RALA P wasn't. So we took some confocal images at four hours and six hours post-transfection. Uh, so these are ortho orthogonal images. Uh, so we have a sort of th three planes of view. So on the, uh, the left-hand side here, you can see in the cytoplasm's green, the nucleus is blue, and the, the DNA was labeled with Psi3, uh, which appears as a red color. So virtually nothing uh, at four hours and six hours for the RALA-P, whereas a, with a weight-to-weight ratio, in this, in this case, eight to six, you can see uh, uh, nanoparticles in the nucleus and in the cytoplasm of cells, and again at six hours, and a, a convergence of nanoparticles around the nucleus. So then we went on to look at some stability studies. Um, so the most significant of these in terms of nanoparticles that form by electric static interaction are, uh, is salt stability, because the presence of ionic species can interfere with the uh, the electrostatic bonds that hold the nanoparticle together, um, causing it to sort of swell and dissociate. So what we did was we looked at a range of uh, different salt concentrations, right up to those that are physiologically relevant. And what we saw was that with increasing pay content, that uh, the stability in the presence of salt increased. We then did a serum stability study. So what this involved was incubating nanoparticles uh, in, uh, in serum for up to six hours and then running them on a gel. Uh, so as you can see here, if I can find the mouse, so there's no movement of DNA through the gel, which sh shows that the, the, the nanoparticle hadn't broken up or been degraded. And then alongside it here, we also used, so just alongside it there on the right-hand side, these are nanoparticles that are similarly treated, but uh, were decomplexed using SDS to show the, sort of, to verify the integrity of the DNA. So then what we wanted to do was look at, oh sorry, as you just mentioned, so because the 8 to 6, 6 to 8 and 4 to 10 we found were the most stable in, in, in the presence of salt um, and that they also had some in vitro activity, these were the ones that we focused on more closely. Uh, so what the next sort of image sort of captures quite nicely is when we moved in vivo, uh, you can sort of see uh, how the introduction of PEG shifts uh, the expression of luciferase away from the liver and lungs uh, of mice. So on the left hand side here we have RALA only and then 12 to 2 so even a small introduction of the peg shifts it quite dramatically away from the liver and lungs and, and so on. So uh, for the final sort of uh, ex experiment then we wanted to show not only does it shift expression away from uh, the liver and lungs but does it uh, enable sort of accumulation and expression in the tumour. 
So what we did was we uh, we had used the 8 to 6, 6 to 8, 4 to 10, and we also had a water only group and a rallet only group. Uh, mice were implanted with uh, PC3 tumors uh, in the dorsal region, uh, and then administered nanoparticles uh, uh, via the tail vein. 48 hours later, they were uh, the organs were harvested, RNA extracted, uh, and reverse transcribed, and then we probed for luciferase expression using real time PCR. So what we found was in the lungs, again, there's a dramatic reduction in the levels of expression compared to the uh, controls. So in, in purple there, we have the, the RALA only. Uh, again, uh, in the liver, there's a dramatic reduction for the 8 to 6, 6 to 8, and 4 to 10 weight to weight ratio compared to the RALA. But then when we looked at the tumor, uh, we saw a slight increase for all the weight to weight ratios as compared to the RALA only. And we actually achieved significance at the weight to weight 6 to 8. So the reason we think the, the 6 to 8 performed best uh, in the in vivo study is because uh, if you remember it was it was at 68 that we saw the sort of dramatic reduction in charge so we think that it probably had good pharmacokinetic uh, proficiency um, it also preserved some in vitro activity and was, it was more stable in eight to six as well in the salt stability study so we think in terms of the balance between uh, pharmacokinetics and uh, in, in vi or sorry transfecting power that it was that it was the best so in conclusion, uh, conjugation of 100% PEG 5K Torella nullifies activity in vitro. The construction of a composite nanoparticle with unpegulated RALA improved activity at a cellular level. RALA RALA P uh, from weight to weight 8 to 6 was stable in salt and serum. RALA RALA P shifted expression away from the liver and lungs when administered in vivo. And it was optimal formulation, or 68 was the optimal formulation for expression in the tumour. So I'd like to just thank my supervisors, Dr. Helen McCarthy, Professor Ryan Donnelly, and Dr. Kean McCrudden, uh, everyone in the group at home in Dell for funding the research. And if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Any questions? I just wondered if you've thought about using a um, degradable peg linker so that you have the peg on the particle while you need it and then in the endosome or, or somewhere in the cell it degrades so you've then got the... Yeah, the so that's, th that's actually sort of the next step that we're going to look at. We're actually looking at hopefully using an MMP cleavable uh, sequence uh, so that would, once, once the tumour is reached, because particularly with prostate cancer there's an upregulation in MMPs, that hopefully it would then cleave the peg and then that would improve the sort of the transfecting part of the nanoparticle as a whole as well once it's reached. It also improves specificity, I suppose. Okay. All right. Thanks very much, Thank Stephen. You.